Hi, back in uh, old surroundings. Um, well, as you can tell, I'm back uh, in my uh, uh, normal home. Moved away back from uh, CISA, where I've been spending lockdown for the last 16 months. And so for my first trip back to the cinema, since uh, The Invisible Man in March last year, I went to see Black Widow last night. Um, reviewed many of the uh, MCU films before. And this is finally the solo film for Scarlett Johansson as Natasha Romanov, or R Romanova, or whatever her last name is pronounced as because it's never mentioned in the film. Um, the Black Widow, who's been a supporting role in most of the Avengers movies and several others of the, in the series. And now she's finally has her solo film. And the film feels like nothing more than place setting for the next set of stories and a contractual obligation. That a star of Johansson's stature has been in all of these movies as um, a supporting performer, but never a lead. And now, given her, her status as a double Oscar nominee, she's finally got a lead role in a film that feels totally inconsequential. The film is set uh, a few years back in the, uh, the Marvel Myth Films timeline, in the aftermath of Captain America's Civil War, with many of the Avengers in prison and Natasha on the run. But it turns out that the Red Room, which operated the Black Widow uh, espionage and assassin program, is still running and brainwashing young women. And uh, when one of them discovers a, a special gas that can undo the psychological conditioning, um, Natasha's foster sister from a, a previous iteration of the Red Room, played by Lance Pugh, uh, is uh, deprogrammed and enlists her foster sister's help, along with her foster parents, played by David Harbour and Rachel Weiss. Rachel Weiss having almost nothing to do in the finished film, or David, Har David Harbour steals most of the scenes he's in. Um, it feels very perfunctory. There's a weird shifting tone all the way through. It doesn't really mesh into a, a whole. There are scenes that are meant to be funny. There are scenes that are meant to be very serious. It's trying to have serious subtexts about exploitation of women and, and sex trafficking. But then you have such a, an underwhelming, uninteresting villain character played by uh, Ray Winston, who's completely miscast. He never has the, uh, the, the charisma or the, the on-screen energy uh, to convey the, the the kind of character that he's supposed to be portraying, and it's it feels very underwhelming. Um, also, the makers seem to forget that Natasha doesn't have any superpowers at all. She's just a really good spy and and fighter. So she's, in a number of occasions, involved in uh, violent action that would cripple a human being. Um, and also Olga Korolenko, very talented Ukrainian actor is prominently built at the start of the movie, but she only appears in two scenes and has a single line of dialogue. She, I think she has less than three minutes of screen time overall. And it's a very odd decision to cast such a major name in such a very, very small role that really doesn't require her at all. Um, the editing is is a mess. There's, there's scenes jump around and there's, there's very little kind of flow. And the, the problem with having a, a, a film that's um, this jump backwards is that unless it's setting up for future installments, there's really no purpose to it. We know where Natasha's story ends. Uh, we've already seen that in Avengers Endgame. So for this to jump back, we have a, a character arc that goes from nowhere to nowhere because her character was never really properly developed. Um, Florence Pugh is very good um, in a supporting role. Uh, as, the, as the foster sister character who's seemingly set up to take over from her as the new Black Widow. And David Harbour, as the would-be Russian equivalent of Captain America, is, is entertaining in his scenes. As I say, Rachel Weiss is really not contributing much, largely sleepwalking through her scenes. It's a bit of a mess, really. Um, it's, I think, by some margin, the worst MCU film to date, because it doesn't really seem to know what it's for. It doesn't really have any purpose aside from setting up the next set of stories, as Civil War did, and Civil War is now barely remembered apart from the big airport fight. And as a result, it, it just feels totally redundant. Um, there is a um, post-credits sequence which sets up a uh, potential conflict in the forthcoming Hawkeye series, Disney+. Plus. 
but who's looking forward to that? Um, I I can't really recommend Black Widow. It's it seems like a, a TV movie that got out of hand. Or one other thing that really annoyed me is that when she's hiding out in the um, Norwegian forests in a caravan, uh, Natasha watches Moonraker on her laptop. And I think there's supposed to be some kind of parallel there between the fantastical spy adventures of Bond and the realistic aspects of uh, this film. But then the climax of the movie steals two plot beats from Moonraker. So it made me wonder, what exactly is this film trying to do? Because it's never clear. And the resulting film is one that doesn't really have any purpose at all.